Hello everyone, I'm here with day three of 31 Days of Halloween. Today we will be reading out some stories for you from r slash paranormal. I was originally going to leave today for uh, talking about my own personal experiences, but we decided to go with, and I apologize if you can hear um, any Discord uh, notifications, uh, but we decided to instead go with some of the stories I picked out from r slash reddit and I got permission from the users. We'll be doing more of these and I'll also be do I'll still be doing my thing eventually, but we decided let's let's go with some other people's spoopy stories. Um <clears throat> you wanna say hi Rob? Hi Rob. I knew you were gonna do that. If anyone's wondering why I keep checking underneath my desk, it, there's a monster. Okay, um, we just took in a new kitty, and so she's still adjusting, but she found some comfort on the footrest on underneath my desk. Speaking of kitties, is oh no, I am plugged, so I can't hear Robo. If Robo is talking to me. Um, nope. Okay. Isn't that adorable? It's adorable. Asking if it's adorable, I'm like, I don't care what you think. It's adorable doesn't matter what you think. So I'm going to let Rob read the story first. Um, like I said, these are all from r slash paranormal and they will all, links to them will all be in the description below. But yeah, so you want to, you want to take things away? Please. Um, thanks for letting me go first, by the way. <laughs> Even though it's, it's your stream. I uh, see how that works out. <laughs> Guests right and all that stuff. Um, <laughs> okay. So this is a story by the user Toxicity 65. When I was tenish, I saw a demon like figure. Hello, I am new here, but I think this is a good place just to tell this experience I had around tenish years old. I was in my room, playing a game on my Xbox 360 when I turned all the systems off and decided it's time to sleep. I hopped in the top bunk of my bunk bed. See, around this age, I was very weary of sleeping alone. I had suffered many traumatic experiences with my family and whatnot. I will not go into detail, as that's not what this story is about, but I have suffered and experienced things that can give children PTSD of some sort. I then slept and woke up, able to move and do everything and look around, and it was 1 to 4 a.m., most likely. I woke up and looked through the guardrail on my bunk and saw the TV was giving off a light. I can't remember if the TV was in static or black with a light screen over it. The TV cast a light upon a tall, dark, muscular figure standing to the left of the TV, facing me. I saw the figure as almost a black shadow, but somehow the light showed me the body, which, as I mentioned, was tall, muscular, and completely black. But there was no face. It's like it was just a shadowed out head with no face. Now that is a bit iffy though, as I can also remember the light shined and showed the backside of the head, as well with shadow horns almost. But I also remember the no face and head part, so uh, I apologize, I don't remember it all to a fine point. When I noticed the apparition, I stared in awe through the bed's rail. I was frozen and absolutely confused and terrified. My first instinct was to hop out of my bunk, drop to the floor, and quickly reach and turn on the lights. And that's what I did. I did all of that. I wasn't in a sleep paralyzed state or anything. I did all of that and I can remember it well. When I turned around after my light was on, the TV was off and there was no figure. No remains or anything to show that anyone or anything was there. And my small box TV was off. This experience doesn't haunt me anymore. It did for years, but I'm not 17, and just am not bothered by it anymore. But it was terrifying for multiple years. I sometimes think it was something checking up on me, or trying to speak to me. I've even thought it was there to remind me I'm as bad as my blood family is, and was. That's it. I hope this post isn't taken down. I don't need help or anything, but many people have experienced something similar. Also, I am not and never have been Christian, but my blood family was, and believed I was a miracle for surviving my very low chance of birth and being a newborn due to a condition I have. Okay. <laughs> Finn. Yeah, you know, for your first take read and stuff like that. 
I, I made a few mistakes there. I, I jumbled. You, over you couldn't over even there. tell for the most part. I, I mean, obviously, if you're reading it, you could probably reading along. I didn't even know. I wasn't fully reading along with you or anything like that. But um, I was just listening. Mine is "What Was in That House" by U slash Peace Earn. I'm so sorry if um if I butchered that. First post to the sub. Hi all. So this happened when I was in eighth or ninth grade. My friend and her family had gone on vacation, and she had enlisted me to come over daily and feed and check on her cats. The first couple of days, my mom came with. Then the third day, my mom went by herself. I was babysitting all day. Then the fourth day, I went by myself. Her house was three blocks away, so I walked. Now. I had been in the house probably a hundred times at this point, so I had no reason to be timid or scared. And at first, I wasn't. I went in, went around the corner to the kitchen, and switched out the water and gave the cat some fresh food. Then I came back into the living room and snuggled the nice kitty. I say that because their older cat was seriously one of the meanest cats I've ever known. Hated everyone, so I was totally fine with her hiding and not wanting attention. I was about to leave, but then remembered my friend said I could borrow some books from her room. We were both both we were both bookworms, so I went down the narrow hallway to her room real quick and started looking through her bookshelf. This put this put my back to the doorway. I had been browsing for a few minutes when, very suddenly, I felt cold and terrified. I was sure someone was standing in the door behind me. It took me several moments, but I finally summoned the courage to turn around. As I looked at the doorway, it was as though someone, something, had just darted out of sight. At this point, I decided to screw the books and nope the hell out of there. I ran out the room, back down the narrow hallway, into the living room, and to the front door. The whole time, it felt like someone was behind me. I didn't even turn around until I was outside, and then just to lock the door, I then ran home. I didn't say anything to my mom for a few weeks, but I did make excuses for her to go with me every day after that until my friend returned. A couple of weeks later, I decided to bring it up to my mom when we were doing driving somewhere. I thought it could be something to laugh about, like "ha ha, I faked out for no silly reason, silly me." But my mom just got really quiet, turned down the car radio, and said, "Honey, the same thing happened to me the day before when I went alone. I didn't say anything to you because I didn't want you to be scared going over there, and I thought it was just my imagination playing tricks on me." Needless to say, my blood ran cold, and the experience has stuck with me all these years. Things that might be relevant: the house was built in the early fifties. My friend at the time was into Ouija boards and the like, but never took it seriously. I also found out years later that her mom was emotionally abusing her. Thankfully, she ended that toxic relationship and is doing so much better. So, has anyone else experienced anything like this, and has, and have theories as to what happened? Thanks for any insights. Yeah, very good. Good job. <laughs> I definitely stumbled you, way more you obviously like, than you. You stumbled a little bit as well, being said today, but um, you put like proper emphasis in the words and stuff. Well, to be fair, they did okay, capitalize is... some words, so that's why I was capitalized. Yeah. I've been... Go. This is something that you might not know about me as well, but um. I'm not sure I ever mentioned it to you because I felt like you would have been very disappointed in me. <laughs> um, but um, I did also mess about with a Ouija board once. I think you might have told me um, once. Yeah, I feel like I might have told you. And I told that, you, I don't ever do it again. Tee hee. Don't ever do it. <laughs> <laughs> it, was over at, it was over at a friend's house. Uh, there's three of us around the uh, Ouija board thing. And at the moment, you do, you do all the normal stupid questions like, hey, is anyone in here? What are you doing? Why aren't you doing anything? That kind of thing. But apparently, my friend did notice some weird stuff happening in the weeks afterwards. Um, probably some strange noises coming from the shed outside. Um, 
I think he mentioned that a few things went missing and stuff, so we might have awoken something in his house. But I did make sure to at least not do it in my own house. So keep myself safe. I worked out. So that's his problem. <laughs> <laughs> Like to me, the idea not only in my you know word. Sorry, sorry. Um, <clears throat> not only is the idea of like accidentally getting something attached to you scary, but the idea of Ouija boards are rude. Like you're literally waking <laughs> up and something. You're calling some random fucking entity and being like, especially if it's a dead one, because usually people doing it to contact the dead. You're like, knock, knock, knock. Wake up! Hey, I've got some really stupid questions to ask you. Hey, hey. It's just I, and also I guess the idea of paranormal investigations can be very annoying to you or rude because you're going to these people's resting place. I mean, I know some of them aren't really at rest, but you're going to this place that they're you know inhabiting, and you're like, hey. Give me a sign. Knock on that door. Knock on that door. Hey, do tricks for me. Do tricks for me. You like you treat them like they're animals in a zoo. You know, it's like. And is the equivalent of maybe like walking into someone's house while they're asleep and then just shouting things and it's like. Hey, I've got some stupid questions. They're trying to sleep. Leave them alone. Yeah, so I do kind of I do agree with you. That was a stupid thing to do. And I'm sure you were. I'm in no rush to do it again. Well, that's two spooky stories for you guys with me and Rob. I hope you guys enjoyed. And like I said, the links to the original will be in the description. And um, thank you for watching. That was day three. You want to say goodbye, Rob? Goodbye, Rob. Thank you everyone for watching. Have a gay day. Day.